everybody, this is Corey from All Coin Buzz Ladies. Very happy to be joining you here for my first video. Um, I'm going to be discussing um, my perspective and my philosophy and approach to reading white papers. Um, I, I know from certain discussions I take a very different approach than the average person when I'm reading white papers. Um, I have a much more conservative view when considering certain investments and you know just kind of in the market that we're in now seeing how it seeing the crash and seeing the uh the market kind of pull back from being so bullish to being more bearish um i think it's important for people to start thinking more critically on when and where they're deciding to invest their money um and so through this video you'll see i'm going to pull up certain instances of white papers i'm going to walk you through kind of how i've read certain aspects of those white papers I'm not going to take you guys from start to finish through any of these white papers. I don't want this video to be a review of certain projects. Um, instead, I really want to highlight and show certain aspects of just how I can teach you guys to critically think in certain instances. Um, and for starters, I'd just ask you kind of step back and think think about your certain your current por portfolio. Apologies. Um, how many of the coins that you coins or tokens that you are currently invested in, do you feel that you truly read the white paper and gave the due diligence needed before you invested, however much you invested in that project? Um, I, From my personal experience, I feel like the average person, um, maybe more than average number of people, um, are lacking in that aspect. And you know, the due diligence that people are doing is through YouTube. They're looking to others who have an agenda, who are getting paid or being promoted, or are financially invested themselves and can only benefit from certain coins or tokens um, hyping. That's where they're doing their due diligence and they're not relying on their own personal judgment um, or their own personal understanding of a project. And so that's really what I'm gonna be discussing here in detail. Um, if at some point, you do want me to go into more detail on a specific white paper if you want a more thorough analysis or if you have comments or questions please just leave them in the feed below um we will be reading those and taking them into consideration as we plan into these next videos so more than happy to um really feed your needs as far as this specific topic goes um so i guess as far as background because this is my first video i will just stop and say um, for us to align and for you to kind of understand me as an investor and somebody who's sitting here trying to give you kind of my approach to this all, it's important for you guys to understand my background in this all. Um, I am a certified public accountant. I have my CPA license um, and I have done a lot of diligence work, both, you know, through education and through career. Um, and so I naturally have this philosophy and this thinking ingrained in me that I don't trust anything that somebody is going to put out there in which they want me they want my money they want me to invest in they want my money whatever it is I don't trust them um, I mean I think a very important um, mentality that most people could benefit from switching into is thinking about white papers like the used car salesman sitting on a lot just hoping somebody walks into their into their lot so that they can sell them a car. Um, these these paper, these white papers, these companies, these projects need you. They need your money. You don't need them. Um, and I think that's a really important mentality that I take when I go into these that a lot of people could benefit from. Um, I, I've sensed and I continue to sense in this market there's a lot of desperation to be in it, um, a lot of FOMO. And if you can stop that, if you can kind of gain control of your own FOMO, of your own desperation to just be invested, and you can kind of step back and set your own rules on investing and set your own understanding of what your risk tolerance is and what types of investments you're really actually trying to be invested in, I think that you can do nothing but benefit from that. Um, and so we will go ahead and get started. Um, I've, I've got a selection here. We're just gonna look at certain points from each of these and kind of the questions. I've got an array of ones that I think are actually pretty good projects to the ones I think aren't. I'm not gonna tell you which I think are really good and which I think are really bad. Um, I don't want me to have any bias over you. 
Um, I just want to, sh you know, show snippets of these specific white papers and walk you through things that, you know, I was coming across as I did my due diligence. And, you know, if you can learn anything from me that goes towards you taking a more critical view of these white papers, I think there's nothing but benefit to be gained from that. Um, I do understand it takes time. Trust me. I don't have that much free time. And so spending what free time I do have kind of in these nitty gritty details and reading technical analysis of all of these projects, it's not necessarily how I want to be spending my time, but I know it's necessary for me to feel comfortable and me to abide by my own risk tolerance and personal strategy investing um, and feel comfortable kind of taking that next step as far as making certain investment decisions. And so I am going to switch. I'm going to give you guys a view of my screen so I can actually walk you through the white papers. But, um, you know, if there is any questions, if there's anything you want me to, again, just leave it in the comments below and more than happy to go through it. So without for further ado. All right. So we are going to go ahead and get started here. Um, I am currently in the BAB Everybody is a Bank work paper or white paper. Sorry about that. Um, I am currently on page 17, I believe. Unfortunately, cannot see the... I'm on page 16. No, 17. Um, and so if if you are interested in looking up MAB, it's an everybody but is a bank protocol. Um, it's a project looking to give access to bank accounts to a number of individuals who maybe don't like the current... Um, platform on which their current banks are operating, you know, a centralized system, or they're looking to actually give access to certain unbanked individuals. If you read the white paper, you'll see unbanked individuals is defined as people who don't have access to a bank account, whether it be they don't have the money to meet a minimum balance requirement, they don't have access to a bank just ge geographically, um, or whatever it might be. They're looking to actually, through the through a smartphone app, give access to people to a bank account and through that bank account, give them access to a debit card. Um, at a very high level, I do like this, uh, the idea of this project, um, just high level. I think that this is some, this is a place where we have a need. We need to somehow identify how we are going to give access to bank accounts to to these individuals and if you read this white paper this the number of people who just don't have access to a bank account is staggering so i mean they definitely make it clear in this in this white paper in the videos they have on youtube there is a market for their for their project and i i do believe there's there is something here that needs to be solved um so i brought you to page 16 though to talk about the section on peer-to-peer -peer borrowing um if you watch if you watch the video that they put on youtube a lot of the focus of this project is on giving access to people to a bank account. Um, the The big thing that I don't see a lot of discussion on, though, is the ability to use this platform for peer-to-peer -peer borrowing. Um, you know, get taking out a loan from a regular bank requires a number of credit checks, a number of minimum balance requirements, um, and just other certain checks that just maybe certain people can't um, qualify for. And so BAB is actually giving you the opportunity here to do peer-to-peer -peer lending through their platform. Um, and they go through an example, you know, Pablo and his fruit stand and his cousin who loans him money. And, you know, the first thing I stepped back and thought to myself was, you know, even just ignoring the Pablo instance, I said, this is meant to be peer-to-peer -peer lending. And every example they'll talk about, they talk about lending to family and friends. Well, Let's assume that it's not necessarily hindered upon necessarily having a relationship with an individual. Um, if you take that assumption away and say anybody can lend to anybody, this platform definitely could possibly have some power. But I think that it comes with a risk and, you know, nowhere in this, in this white paper have I seen the discussion on this risk. Um, and you see here kind of the search I was doing on default. So, what was the scenario that I was thinking about in my head is, you know, let's just say, for example, and I see, you know, they've got the Pablo and Luis example here on page 17, but let's just go with an example where two people don't know each other. I'm sitting in, let's just say, Kenya, and, um, you know, I, I need, I have this project where I think, like, if I buy a goat, 
I can create, I can take that goat and I can milk it and I can generate a source of income for myself. And with that income, I will be able to better my life. And I just don't have the funds currently to make the initial investment and get the goat. Um, I go reach out on this app and, you know, somebody in India um, sees my request and says, oh, they're only looking for $100. They're going to buy a goat. You know, she seems to have a business plan. She's going to use that goat to make income. With that income, she'll pay back my loan. And then she will have a stable source of income going forward. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, I'm going to send her the $100. Well, let's just play this out. So I get the goat and, you know, everything's running smoothly. And I'm able to generate milk. The, the goat is able to generate milk. And with that milk, I'm able to generate income for myself. Um, but let's say day three... I come out in the morning and an animal has eaten my goat or the goat has been stolen, whatever it may be. Um, my source of income is now gone and the hundred dollars that I was lent is now gone. My question for this app and something I don't see discussed in this white paper is, you know, in this peer to peer borrowing platform, how are they expecting to handle the instances of a default or an inability to repay? And, you know, even if we go through, you'll see the discussion default. Um, and it just not in the context of somebody getting a peer to peer bar or peer to peer loan and having the inability to repay. The three examples of the word default in here just aren't a part of that discussion um, and so you know I really asked myself there's two questions you know does Bab not know that this potential risk exists and has not considered how the platform is going to handle an inability to repay and who will bear the risk or has Bab figured this out and does not think that it's something that their investors would be happy understanding maybe they're pushing the risk to the person in India who made the loan. Maybe they're pushing the risk onto the person who, you know, bought the goat and the goat was stolen um, and forcing them to repay. You know, you just don't see how they anticipate handling this scenario in this white paper. And that's a big question for myself. If you're going to open yourself up to be a financing platform, I'd expect to see within a white paper a discussion on some very basic scenarios of what could happen in financing issues, and it's just not here. And so that is just an example of, you know, a more technical view of BAB, and now let's look at another. Okay, so, all right, so here is our second, and this is Experty. And Experty is a platform by which they're allowing experts in certain industries to be readily accessible by the average person. So what does that mean? Well, I'm sitting in the middle of Ireland and I have a question for a doctor as to regards to a certain condition or a certain thing I'm experiencing. Rather than having to go to the doctor or go to a specific place to have my concerns dealt with, I'm able to go on Experty, I'm able to reach out to a specific in that specific field, an expert in that field, I'm able to contract in a minute with them, have a discussion and, you know, pay them through the tokens on this, uh, this platform for their advice and for their expert opinion. Now, while I don't want to really go into expertise itself in this, I did want to point out a section of this um, white paper that I don't see that often, and it's this. It's a business strategy, and, you know, even if I scroll down, I've got business strategy here, and, you know, they've got their market defined, um, they're talking about their integration to the platform. They do switch over to software, but if we skip the software section, and we gotta skip for a few pages. Hmm mobile application, web application. We come to their timeline, which I really like to see timelines um, and their project plans in a uh, white paper. Here's their future white paper project plan. They give you this roadmap. They give you just kind of an understanding of where they're looking to go. Um, here they're giving you their token generation event summaries. 
and their use of their proceeds summary. So I know we just, just very high level, just skim through a bunch of pages, but what's the point I'm trying to get to? Um, when, when you're reaching out as a company or as a project um, trying to gain investors, you know, if you watch any shows like Shark Tank or if you know anything about, you know, investors looking for, or projects looking for angel investors or anything like that, you know that proposals are needed. What a lot of people don't realize and what I think we're experiencing in some of these white papers is that there's such a high focus on the project itself. What is the technology? What is the actual project going to do? And one of the things I look for specifically is not necessarily 100% of the white paper to be focused on the project, but probably about 40, 30 to 40% of the white paper to actually be on a business discussion. I want to know that the people who I'm giving my money to have plans for that money, that they have a business project uh, plan beyond just, you know, you'll see these roadmaps in a lot of um, white papers. But I want to see more than that. Like, I, the roadmap is definitely like a check in the box. I need that to be in a white paper for me to understand what they're, what they're thinking. But more than that, I like to see some of these future discussions. What are they going to do with their proceeds? How are they going to continue to develop? How are they allocating all of their costs and their financing? Um, going into software development, I like to see just this more financially minded business running philosophy in these white papers on how they're actually just going to run their business. Um, I think it's a staggering amount of the vast majority of startups do not make it past their second year. And it's partially because of a failure to plan mentality. Um, There's a number of white papers you will open and there's not a single discussion of how they're using their finances. Where is the Where's the hard cap money that they're going to get from the ICO going to be invested within their own business um, to just make the project better? And an example of another one, I don't have the uh, white paper pulled up, but another example of a company that I really like their long-term philosophy is Cardano. If, If you take a look at Cardano and kind of their business philosophy and how they actually plan to run their business they're taking certain amounts that they that they gain and they're putting it aside in this function called treasury and treasury is set aside only for future development and future enhancements to their own technology um and you know a lot of these projects are coming to us as this is a perfect project this is the project i want to um go to market with and it's it's amazing invest in me uh cardano and as you'll see here in experty they're saying, no, we're going to continue to invest in our software development. We're going to put funds aside to make sure that we're constantly doing long-term research and, you know, building our platform to be even better. And even if it's generic, it's something just saying software development or long-term research, I like that it's here. I like that as a thought that they're having. Um, I like that they're giving their business strategy just the effort it takes to put in here, it just shows a sense of awareness of what they're doing. Um, Here even they go into detail as to what they're specifically looking at when they say those specific legal administrative costs, marketing and sales, and so forth. Um, And you know, even their go-to-market strategy. There's just so much from a business perspective that doesn't necessarily deal with the project and the technology itself in this white paper. It really makes me feel like the people I'm investing in in this project have thought it through and have a strong basis for how they're coming out and plan to be successful. That really makes me more comfortable with the team, with the um, project itself from it from the start. Um, now, it sounds like from this, you'll probably get the opinion that I really like expertise and um, the expertise team would sound great based on all of the stuff that they've given me. Well, the issue I do have is if you come here, I'm not seeing much detail on the team. You would have to go to LinkedIn and just use kind of the internet to um, try and find out more about these specific individuals. I have no real background. They're CEO and founder. I have no background what what he's in. Um, He could be the CEO because he's an incredible businessman. He could be the CEO because he's incredible in technology. He could also be the CEO because he's diverse and has both skill sets. Um, 
I just don't know from this white paper and that's something I don't necessarily like um, without having to do further research. I mean, across the board, I will always further research a team, but I do like to just have a snapshot more than just a name in their current position within the white paper to really be able to start basing my, um, my specific opinions. All right, guys, so here's, here's going to be our last one. Again, I'm just looking to give you guys some snapshots of what I'm looking at in these. Um, so this is going to be the Sealy white paper. Um, I'm not really going to go into a lot of details. I'm going to kind of use the last two examples I went through and kind of show you a couple of things that really just jumped out. I think I won't go into too many specific examples, just overall. Um, in this specific white paper, I'd say it's very technically dense. Um, it, it was so technically dense, I think, in this instance that I specifically kind of flagged that as a, a, as a red flag for myself. Um, if I can't understand a project, if I can't understand the technology, um, at least at like a pretty decent level, I, I start to feel um, a little uncertain, not so much because I don't understand it, but more because the people who put together a white paper have not done well, in my opinion, at writing a white paper to their target audience. Their target audience, in my opinion, is a generic set of investors in our current market, and while I'm not reflective of probably the educational background or anything of the typical investor. Um, I consider myself a part of that audience and when a technologically heavy discussion is occurring in a white paper and it doesn't appear that there are sections where they can't bring it back to just a more generic audience, it's just a red flag for me. Um, and this one I would say is very technically dense. The um, the other thing that you can see here is if you look at just the um, the table of contents here, there's an extremely long white paper. I think it's like 45, 43 pages. Um, and you'll see the only time we start getting into anything talking about a business is, you know, we got the core team and the roadmap here. I, I, I don't really see anything else about business perspective anywhere else in here. I'm not seeing any... Um, type of discussion on use of funds. I'm not looking at, I'm not seeing anything about, you know, planning into the future, constant betterment of the technology. You know, I just, I personally, it's one of the first things I look for when I open a white paper. I want to see a business strategy. I want to see how they're going to run the project from a business perspective and really where the thought is as far as continuous growth. Um, you know, this technical discussion just continues on and on for multiple pages. I'm just missing that piece. Um, another thing, and I think just that's a quick check for me. When I open a white paper, it's the first thing I look for. Where's the business discussion? Because it's it's either there or it's not, and it's either sufficient from my point of view, at least to make me comfortable that they're thinking about your, their business strategy and how they're running their project, um, or it's not there. And I, I immediately just have a concern that, you know, potentially within the future, there's potential things that they haven't thought through. And do I really want to be putting my money into a company that hasn't thought through some of these basic business um, strategic decisions? And so I always come to the table contents and I look for that. The second thing when I open these, and I think this is a really good example, is I'm going to look at the references. I want to see where the company's looking. And I think this has been on Twitter a couple times and everything else like that. If I look to their references, I'm seeing five, and you can see where I flagged it, three of which are from Wikipedia. I mean, immediately before I even get into the Sealy white paper, I've opened it, I'm missing the business discussion I'm looking for, and I'm seeing references to Wikipedia. 60% of the references are actually referencing Wikipedia. So for me, as an initial start, I always had just a little bit of a concern on Sealy itself. Um, when I read it, again, as I started with this, it's a very technically dense discussion. I never truly got comfortable that it was going to be a, a project that I truly wanted to invest my money in. I know, um, you know, there's been a lot of hype on this one specifically. And, um, you know, as soon as something goes to YouTube or goes to Twitter, before you read the opinions or listen to the opinions of other people, it's my personal perspective to stop and, you know, go read the white paper for yourself first, then come back and watch the YouTube video. You don't realize this, 
But as soon as you listen to the opinions of another person, you are biased when you open that white paper. If they're going to tell you it sounds like a scam, you're going to read it with a lens of this, this is going to be a scam. If, if you listen to somebody who hypes it and thinks that it's the next um, greatest technology to be discovered, you're going to read it from a perspective of, hey, maybe all of this technical jargon means that they're extremely intelligent and they know what they're doing and this is just a positive. If I can't understand it, it's just so technically dense that they're just so smart. Um, again, from my perspective, before you're going to listen to a review on YouTube, do yourself a favor and just take a look at the white paper for yourself and just make sure that you have an opinion before you go in and present other opinions that could bias your decision. All right, guys. So as discussed, those were three very small, very minute details from white papers that I'd read um, that I wanted to just point out. You know, I just want to start start the thought process going. How can you start reading these uh, white papers more critically? How can you be doing more due diligence as the investor up front? Um, you know, nothing discussed here was meant to be a financial advice or tax advice. Um, I'm not a financial advisor. And so as we go through these, I'm going to continue in certain examples, just continuing to tell you guys how I read these, how I'm, you know, analyzing these from a personal perspective, um, from a conservative perspective, and from like, I have a very sensitive risk tolerance. Um, I will be upfront about that. Um, if you find this useful, that's perfect. I want to know what white papers you guys want to go into. I want to know what discussions you guys want to be having. Um, you know, this was a 20, 25 minute video just on three very small snippets from these white papers. And that's just, that alone is just a fact for how long that a white paper analysis can take. The BAB discussion took how many minutes? And that was just running through a scenario um, of what could happen in this potential environment. And so you can see that these analyses take time. There's a lot of thought that goes into it. There's a lot of running through the facts. Um, but if you're investing your finances in this, is that time not worth it? Um, if you're able to flag, such as Sealy, 60% of their references are from Wikipedia, potentially you can save yourself from investing in something that, you know, down the road may have an issue. And, you know, when it's it's shown on Twitter or YouTube days later as having had these issues, well, you're the investor who was diligent enough to have caught it on the front end. And, you know, that's the only thing we're looking to help you guys do is learn to think more critically, learn to analyze these from your own perspective and kind of know what's important to you, um, what are you looking for, and, you know, take that perspective as you go forward and continue to invest. And as the landscape of cryptocurrency just continues to evolve, I mean, as investors, we have the ability um, to determine what comes into these white papers. If, as investors, we determine that we need companies to be and projects to be discussing their business strategy and be validating how they're going to be using their funds, it's going to become something that needs to come into the white papers. Um, it's not necessarily something that needs regulation. I mean, if you look to the SEC and you look to other regulatory boards, they have these requirements of filings coming in from public companies. And these are discussions that they're needing to have. These are things that are audited to make sure that they're actually factually accurate in a material way. Um, so if we want to keep things decentralized, if we want to keep down this road, as an investor, you just need to determine the threshold of inv information up front that you need to have. And if enough investors say we need this um, in a decentralized platform, that is how you will help determine what these projects and what these companies are looking to put out there as far as information on their projects. Um, I'm hoping this was helpful. Um, if you do have comments, if you do have questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, constructive feedback is allowed. Hopefully it's constructive and not just mean, so please be nice. Um, aside from that, I hope you guys subscribe to our channel. This is Altcoin Buzz Ladies. Um, if you aren't already subscribed, also subscribe to Altcoin Buzz. We look forward to continuing these. Um, I look forward to discussing further white papers and investment possibilities with you guys. Um, very excited, so please just let me know your thoughts. Thanks.